welcome to another Chew and Chat. I am Justine Dorn, this is Ron Rayfield, and this is Mishmish. We finally got him to obey Hello. and be in the cabin. <laughs> he loves it outside, so he's always outside playing, but it's nighttime, so it's his bedtime. Oh and yes. He's about to get tucked into bed in the cabin. <laughs> But first we have a delicious meal and we have a lot to talk about. Yes, because it is October now, so that yes. means it's spooky season. It's so spooky time. For the entire month of October, we're going to be bringing you all kinds of spookiness stuff. Spookiness stuff. And history. Yeah, spookiness stuff and history. Exactly, summarized perfectly. I, I could have said it better myself. <laughs> Today on Early American, we didn't cook. We actually made a face cream, a cold cream actually, from Toilets of Flora, published Ooh. in seven, 1772, I think it was. And I believe it was actually published in England, which is the, the, the case with all books um, previous to 1790-something. They were usually published in England, but they were shipped over to America. That book was actually pretty popular in the United States, even though it was published in England, so it's still relevant. And I made this cold cream. I looked through the whole book and I thought, okay, what can I make that won't burn my face off? And this was the only dang thing in there that wouldn't burn my face off. You just need some old hog lard. Yeah, you want me to throw bacon grease or on me. possum, possum fat. Mmm, possum fat. But you know what? You are going to get this rubbed on your face what? today. I don't yeah. want that stuff. Well, you're going to get it. All we, right. To give it a fair review, we have to test it on at least two people, right? So we try it on myself. Now we got to try it on Ron Ron. But first, we are going to Let's eat. Let's eat first. I'm so starving. After we eat, we are going to slather this goop, this face goop, on Ron. Now, normally I would say if you'd like to see this meal being made, go to Early American. But if you want to see Justine make that face cream that I'm going to try after we eat, go to Early American and watch that, please. Yeah, so we didn't, we, we need to eat dinner, you know? So yeah, we, we just. We can't starve. We, we put together this very typical supper of ours. We didn't film ourselves making it. But I'll tell you how I made it while we eat it. It's just sausages roasted with sweet potatoes, Brussels sprouts, and onions. So we're about to dig into that with some mustard. Let me serve you up. Chat with you guys about every sort of thing. And yeah, Mish Mish is a meower, so you're going to hear him meowing the whole time and yep. in the video. You guys wanted him, so you Here got he him. Is. He's a very vocal animal. <laughs> oh, yes. yes Thank he's you, got, Ron. He's, That'll do. He's got food. He went to the bathroom already. Yeah, he's, he's got just water. very vocal. Everyone says that about him. We think that's why he was dumped whenever we found him at right. Christmas last year. We think he was dumped because he's so vocal that maybe he, his previous owner couldn't stand it. He has separation issues really bad. And even when he's with you, he just meows constantly. He's a baby. He's a, he is a fur, fur baby. baby. Yeah, he really, I mean, he cries like a baby. It's insane. Mish, mish. Hey. It's nighttime. You can't go out there. Hey, you're, hey. you're black. You'll get lost in the darkness. That's right. You won't be able to see your own paws. <laughs> you won't be able to see your own paws. You won't be able to see your own nose. <laughs> all right. We can say grace. <clears throat> Dear Lord, thank you for all of our friends that are joining us here this evening. We hope that everybody's having a great week and staying safe. And thank you for this meal. And thank you for Justine. And thank you for Mishmish. Uh, amen. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> We are drinking some apple cider. Because which it is October. It is October. We can officially <laughs> bring that out. I think apple cider is uh, the fall version of sweet tea for us Midwesterners. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I love it when it's warmed up. I like it hot mm -hmm. and I like it cold. I like it both, but I think I prefer it cold. Hmm. But I like it both. Trust me, I will not turn it down. Now, don't worry. We're still going to rate this meal. What? You're going to rate my actual cooking? I'm going to rate this cooking. Yes, okay. I am. So how did I make this for you at home? Not a particular historic recipe, but something that hypothetically they could have made back then. There's nothing about that. I don't see they, they had Brussels sprouts in America at this time. They're actually very popular. They love sweet potatoes. They're like miniature little cabbages. They are. They might be from the same family. I know they're from the broccoli family. I like them. So I tossed the vegetables Cut it all up. I topped it with some olive oil and I had some oregano, some thyme, some rosemary, salt, pepper, garlic, um, some onion powder I put in there, which is just dehydrated onion that's been crushed up. And yeah, and then I just mixed that all together and I, I put it on a, a big dish and I put the sausages on top. They were raw sausages and I roasted it at 
400 degrees for one hour. <laughs> so there you go. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. I could eat this every day. It's very good. Are you, you guys can't see, but behind you on the dry sink, Mish Mish is pawing at the window. He might see <laughs> Get me out of here! <laughs> there, there's a, a neighbor. Are you okay? You okay? Uh oh. I got Brussels sprout. What am I along? I'm not joking. That's bad. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Nothing like getting a bunch of strap down the wrong too, right? I'm so sorry, guys. My eyes are watering. Take a drink. Please. Carefully. <laughs> okay. She's okay. Okay. You were saying behind the camera, Mish Mish was pawing at the window. Yeah, he's seen something out there. I don't know what. We get raccoons, we get foxes, we get uh, random uh, cats that come through. Oh, yeah. Stray cats. Yeah. And uh, he actually hangs out with them. Hey, get away from my salsa. <laughs> he, he hangs out with uh, a couple of cats that, that will come near the cabin <laughs> in the evening. There's one he plays with all the time. We don't know what his name is, but we named him Mash Mash. And they're best friends. Now, don't freak out. I know the cat's on the table. But I'm not going to pet him and touch the food, so. Yeah. It's all okay. And Mash Mash... I'm sorry, Mish Mish is um, neutered, mm -hmm. so he will not reproduce, so do not worry about that. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ron, what would you rate, since you said you were going to do it, my typical cooking, <laughs> what would you rate it? I'm going to give this a 9. And I say 9, not 10, because there ain't enough of it, because I'm going to eat all of it. Oh. Okay. Good. Hey, if you're looking for something to do this weekend, come on down to St. Genevieve. We've got our first fall event at the uh, backyard of the Bald Duke House. It's the uh, St. Genevieve Militia Encampment. So yes. you'll see camp uh, camp set up. You'll see drilling, musket firing, uh, tomahawk throwing, other trade skills. We'll be there. Uh, they'll be cooking. Yeah. Yes. We It'll always, be. we go every year. The weather's going to be nice. I know it's really hot this week. Uh, summer has come back this week. <laughs> it's been 90 the past couple of days, and I think today's <laughs> probably the last hot day. Thank but this weekend, it's going to be uh, nice and cool down in the Sitsies, and it'll be, be a great time. It's a free event. Mm -hmm. And like I said, once again, that's at the Center French Colonial Life at the backyard of the Bold Duke House in St. Genevieve. Oh, the Midwest. In the morning, you got to wear a sweater, long sleeves. By the afternoon... You have heat exhaustion. Mm -hmm. You don't know how to dress around here in this time of the year. It's a 40 degree swing. Yeah, it's crazy. <clears throat> like at night, it gets down to the low 50s Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. But during the day, it gets up to be 90. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. <clears throat> Look at how Mish Mish is just staring you at that sausage. Of, I know. You ain't getting my sausage, boy. <laughs> mm -mm. Mm -mm. Oh, I just feel cruel. He's already ate. Oh no, let me give him a little bit. What, are you gonna waste a sausage? No, no, not a whole sausage. Just this. Mm. I bet you he won't even eat it. That's how he is. I don't know. He, let's see. Let's see. He likes he might bl like blueberries. It. He does like I've watched him eat blueberries. I've watched him eat Cracker Barrel biscuits. <laughs> and he loves butter. Speaking of Cracker Barrel, I can finally Finally unleash my full spooky on you guys, and I bought a so I bought this from Cracker Barrel two oh, months yeah. ago. Yeah, when they first put it out back in August. <laughs> back in August, they had this in their store. Ron and I are obsessed with Cracker Barrel. We're very simple-minded organisms. Yes. And I saw this and I thought, oh my gosh, this is so spooky. I have to buy it. It's a candle, and I'm about to light it. Light it finally. Light it up. I've been waiting. This has just been sitting in my room for months. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. Okay, let's see. It's got plastic eyeballs and <clears throat> all sorts of things. Oh, they're supposed to float? I think so, when the when the wax melts. And I'm going to put it next to my corn husk dolls. Don't catch them on fire. I won't. <laughs> These are made out of corn husks. Yeah, those are really neat. Yeah, there's only one thing in here, corn husks. Even the hair on this witch. 
That's the little tassel at the yeah, top of the corn. Yeah, the top of the corn. It's all made from corn husks. I thought it's really cool. Cute. I'll just move that a little farther away. Well, hey, we're not going to get into this week in history just yet. But Later I do week. have a ghost, an account, what do you call it, account? It's not a story. It's, it's not a, a story. real life <laughs> event. Apparently, someone said that this really, really happened. They swear it did. You be the judge. Do you really think that this happened or is this baloney? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there is Lord Littleton. He is in the House of Burgess and it's the late uh, 1700s over in England. England. All right? Mm -hmm. On Wednesday night of the 24th of November in 1779, Lord Littleton saw a ghost which told him he would die within three days. He mentioned this to various friends and acquaintances. On the 25th, the following day at breakfast, Lord Ludington told the ladies that he was accompanying with that he had an extraordinary dream. The extraordinary dream he had seemed to be taking place in a room, like a bedroom. Okay. In which a bird flew into the window. Yeah. Through the window. And it turned into a woman wearing a white gown. Real? He really said this? He really said this. Okay. Next, the lady, the bird that turned into the lady told him that he should die in three days. He, now, he did not give this much regard because he could some, somehow see how this dream would come to him because the previous day he was with a woman and a red robin flew through her bedroom while he was there. <clears throat> so anyways, the following day, he's hanging out with more friends. And this is, the, this is on the third day at this point, on the, 30, on the 27th. He tells his friends that he feels very well and believes that he should bleak the ghost that he's seen in his dream. That he should what? Bleak, which means to outsmart. Oh. And he's going to live. Oh, so he's going to out. He thinks he's the dream was baloney and he's going to outsmart right, the ghost. Right, because it's the it's third day and he doesn't feel sick and he, he's, he's fine. So his friends later accounted that this happened. Yes. They told him that. So, anyways, at the end of that day, on the third day, his servant was helping him undress when they took off his waistcoat. Apparently, that's when he died. He just dropped dead. He just dropped dead. He didn't moan, groan, <laughs> nothing it says. He just dropped dead. Yeah, that's freaky. Now, also it's noted here that same night, his friend, who was a couple miles down the road in his own house, awoken from his bed whenever... The window and the curtains were open in the middle of the night, and it showed Lord Ladington standing there in a nightcap and like a robe. His ghost appeared to his friend. Yeah, and the friend did not know he had passed yet, because the friend didn't learn about it until the following afternoon at 4 p.m. Oh. So that's freaky. But here's the other thing. This guy, I, I almost think he was pro-America, because he spoke out against the government and parliament. Mm -hmm. So he was on his, he'd already been expelled or kicked out at one point in time. Uh, years before and then he got back in so maybe he was poisoned maybe, maybe. so maybe somebody took uh, his, his dream and said hey let's go ahead and poison this guy because he says that he saw oh. a ghost that he's gonna die or maybe the ghost really did come to him and say but, hey you're somebody's gonna poison you yeah but here's the thing when you're poisoned usually you don't just croak and die usually you feel it coming along uh, not speaking uh, from experience but I can even cyanide they say that one works the fastest I can still picture like for 10 seconds before, you'd be like, oh, there's something wrong. He wouldn't just croak. Yeah, good point. But well, he was only in his 30s. He was boring, oh, born wow. in 1744, and he died in 1779. Mishmish is asleep. Am I that boring? Did that story <laughs> put you guys to sleep? <laughs> Anyone? 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 You guys know that movie, right? Ferris Bueller's Day Off, where that oh. teacher's just like, Anyone? <laughs> Anyone? <laughs> so do you believe that this really happened? His friends went to their grave saying that this really happened. This story really took place. No. Yeah. Interesting. So, I'm glad you like this. Are you seriously going to eat more? Mm-hmm. Unless like you want some. Too. Nah. Okay. Come on that me. diet, remember? <laughs> more for me. <clears throat> I'll, I'll eat one more sausage. The other one, I don't know if I can do that. Okay, we'll save it. But I'll eat some of these taters, though. Yeah, eat up, because eat slow, I guess, because when you're done, I'm about to put some face cream oh, on your face. Man. <laughs> do face I got it? Do I really got it? You got it. Can we just do it on my hands? No. 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 
Anyway. I see some sweat and debris on your forehead. I think I can take that off for you. I, in case you guys haven't noticed, my complexion is a little darker. I've been kissed by the sun <laughs> uh, over these last few weeks building the house. Yeah. I was actually up on the roof the other day. We were, uh, the, the roofers were doing the shingles and stuff, and me and my dad were up there. We were working on capping off our chimneys until we get ready to do them because there's some rain coming. Mm. And so that was really up high. That's the highest I've been on that thing yet. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I don't like heights. When he was up there, I was like, Santa Claus, you're too early. <laughs> <laughs> too thin, too, too shaven. Too shaven. <laughs> and too poor. I ain't got no gifts. <laughs> yeah. Hey, speaking of gifts, thank you guys for sending in beeswax. I really, really appreciate that. I, we yeah, went, there's no return address. Yeah, we went to the post office today and we got a box full of beeswax. Ten and, pounds and cotton wick for candle making, and uh, there is no return address on it. So thank you so much for that. Mm -hmm. That is a very, very lovely gift. I have had some other viewers very kindly mail in a surprise of beeswax to us because I make candles. I just dip them, you know, I don't add any special scents or dyes or anything. It's just beeswax tapers. But we're always in need of beeswax, mm -hmm. and I just really appreciate that gift, so thank you so much. I can't write you back because there's a return address on there, but uh, I hope you're watching. Yes. So thank you so much for that. Thank you. Huh. I can make a lot of candles with mm -hmm. 10 pounds of beeswax. <laughs> He's just passed out. <laughs> Yeah, he's I'm, sleeping. I'm sorry you guys are getting the uh, other end of it. Next to his sausage, which he did not eat. He chewed on it and he spit it out. That's how he always is. Wasting my sausage. <clears throat> well, do we want to get into this week in history or face cream? This week in history. <clears throat> Go. Alrighty. <laughs> so this week in history. We have just a few. October 2nd. 1768, British troops arrive in America, in Boston to be exact, under the uh, command of General Thomas Gage. So what it for? begins. Oh, it begins. Yes. So during the 1760s, right after the French and Indian War ended in America, there were tensions that were already brewing leading up to the American Revolution, even though that didn't really kick off until uh, 1775 at Bunker Hill. The Sons of Liberty were already operating and aggravating British officials and stuff here in America. So they sent in reinforcements in 1768. So that, that was kind of the first wave of, hey, we got a problem with the colonists. Let's send some people over. And oh. well, anyways, you know how that ended. We're <laughs> the United States of America now. Yeah. Anyways, moving on. There was Next. a bit of a war. Yes. October 4th, 1822. Happy birthday to Rufer B. Hayes. Our, uh, eight, our 19th president of the United States. Okay, happy birthday to happy our birthday. 19th president. Also, the following day, October 5th, on 1829, Chester A. Arthur, our 21st president. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yay. <laughs> All right. For October 6th, I have 1683. The first immigrants come to Pennsylvania from Germany and found Germantown. That's very old. And it's very important because it's a huge influence in Pennsylvania. Even today, you see a yeah. lot of uh, Dutch influence oh, yeah. in art and cooking. German even, Pennsylvania Dutch. You yeah, know, Pennsylvania Dutch. Call it. Isn't that what the Amish kind of speak today? Or they yeah, they speak Pennsylvania Dutch. I, I mean, that's just what we call it. I'm sure they have their own word for their own language. <clears throat> Next up, last one I got is October 7th. In uh, 1816, the first double-decker steamboat arrives in New Orleans with the big paddle wheels on it. Oh my gosh, what year is that? Uh, 1816. That's pretty early, isn't it? So you think riverboat gambling trips? That's the, that's the type of boat. Yeah, you guys picture <laughs> steam riverboats with Victorians? We'll go a little earlier than that because they had them even in 1816. Speaking of that, there's a good movie called Maverick come out in the late 90s with Mel Gibson. Hmm. He's on a riverboat gambling trip and he's a... It's a Western movie, but it's really good. I actually have one for this week in history. I usually don't, but this week I have one. On the 5th of October, 1789, was the Woman's March on Versailles. Sometimes it's called just the October March in France. 
Now, why is that significant to American history? Well, firstly, let me explain what in the world that was. The Woman's March on Versailles in 1789. So, in the early hours of the morning, there was a woman in the market who started beating a drum. And she was just by herself. Yeah, in France. This was in France. In Paris, France, to be exact. And she was saying that she is sick and tired of there not being enough bread. This has been going on for years. And the American Revolution had happened some years previous, like started years previous to this. And people think that the American Revolution inspired the French Revolution. And France was an ally to the United States. And actually the very final battle of the American Revolution was fought between French naval forces and British naval forces. So France really helped us to win the American Revolution. A lot of our guns and our uniforms were supplied by France during the Revolution. So without France, who knows if we would have won or not, they really got our backs. Mm -hmm. But downside for them, I guess, or upside, is it really inspired their own people to also have a revolution. Oh, that backfired real bad on y'all, didn't it? <laughs> so this woman was beating a drum in the market and she got a couple more women to join her. They were like, yeah, man, I can't feed my family. I got five kids, I can't feed them, yeah. So before you know it, there was like maybe a hundred of these women and they stormed into a church and they forced the priest to ring the church bells and they gathered up more women and more women and soon there were even men that joined them and they said we are tired of this we are starving we don't have any bread to feed our children our husbands and so we are going to march to versailles which is a um i don't know what you would call it a town really i've been there actually but it's like kind of a suburb off of paris maybe it's a city off of paris but it's right next to Paris. You can walk there, technically. It takes a long time, but you can walk there. So all along the way, they were gathering more and more supporters of the cause. And it's crazy, but by the time they reached Versailles, which took hours, they had 10,000 people. Wow. Yeah, they had about 10,000 people. Most of them were women, but some of them were men. It's called mob. <laughs> Basically, it was a mob. They actually... <clears throat> stormed a, um, oh, what's the word for it? Like an artillery storeroom along the way, an armory, that's it, an armory. And they stole the weapons, but a lot of the women had kitchen knives with them, but they stormed this armory and they, they stole guns. They stole a cannon along the way. So they had a cannon, they had kitchen knives. Now stay away from those kitchen knives, oh my gosh. But once they finally got to Versailles, Marquis de Lafayette just happened to be at Versailles at the time and he caught wind that this was happening and so this happened in the early hours of the morning by this time the next day I believe they have been wa walking for a really long time and this mob storms into the palace they couldn't get in at first but then they found an unlocked gate off to of the side so they storm in and all chaos breaks loose I don't know if their intention was to actually kill people or what, but they uh, killed a couple of the guardsmen, they decapitated them, they put their heads on spikes. Man, that's and, medieval stuff. Yeah, and, well, it's the 18th century, you know, but, and then Mary Antoinette was terrified and she was in the palace with her, with her two children and she was like going from room to room trying to figure out where can I hide and the whole time the mob was like following her and they had to lock the door after every single room she was in. They didn't know where she was, but she, Mary Antoinette could hear them coming. And they liked the king. They actually wanted to save the king, but they didn't like the queen. They blamed the queen for everything that was going wrong in the country. And she was only a teenager when she got married, but she was Austrian, they didn't trust her. So they wanted to take the king and take him back to Paris because they thought that the queen was a bad influence on the king. And they also thought that if they took him out of Versailles and put him in Paris, that he would be away from that bad influence and he would be a better help to the people. Hmm. But I guess once they got there, all, all hell broke loose and they kind of forgot about that. But mm -hmm. Marquis, Marquis de Lafayette, they were on a veranda. He came out with the king and he calmed down the crowd. 
because they trusted him. He was considered a French war hero by this point. He also fought in the American Revolutionary mm -hmm. War. Best so, friends with uh, George Washington? Yes, he was. And he actually toured <laughs> around this area when he was older. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so he has a local connection here. But his presence calmed the crowd down significantly. And the king came out on the patio at first. And, and the crowd loved the king. They said, long live the king! <laughs> but then... Uh, with with the queen, they weren't they weren't very they they did not like the queen at all. I wonder why they killed them then. I'm not sure. I think after a while they just realized they had to get rid of the monarchy. Mm. But yeah. it still lived apparently. They they went into hiding. Some of them came to America even, and then they returned yeah. and then they restored a king yeah, after Napoleon for a while. For a, little for a while bit. they did. Yeah, uh, Francis had a lot of revolutions. <laughs> But after, but this is very significant because after this, they took the king, they took the queen and their children, and they took them out of Versailles, out of the palace, and they took them into Paris, France. And then after that, history's written down. They went to trial. Eventually, they got executed. First the king, and then the queen. What a way to go. Uh, yeah, especially Marie Antoinette. She went. Her final days were pretty bad. She had no privacy. Mm. So uh, I guess it's uh, we have the table cleared here. So I guess it's time for the uh, face cream. Maybe? It's time for the face creams. Right. Don't uh, worry, bye. Mish Mish. I will not do this to you. My victim today is another gentleman. Hey, what's it smell like? Doesn't have a smell. Ooh. There's no it smell. Smells like woman. There's no, no smell. It smells girly. There's no smell in there. What are you talking about? It's beeswax and oil. That's what women smell like. Well, You'll you because you wear it. Okay, right. so this is a cold cream. Do you know what a cold cream is, Ron? It makes you cold? No, it does not make... Well, when you first put it on, yeah, it might be like, oh, it's cold. Oh, good, it's cool me down a little bit. It's a little warmer here. <laughs> but I don't know why they call it cold cream, actually. Do you guys know? I don't know, but it's a why cleanser. It cool? It's a cleanser that you, does not require water. Okay. So what you, it's, what you do is you rub it on <clears> dry <throat> skin... You rub it really well, and then you take a rag or a cotton or something like that, and you wipe it off, and it takes off the dirt and the makeup and the grime and the sweat with it, but it leaves a film over your face so you're moisturized and you're not dry like when you wash with soap. Okay. So let's try this cold cream from the 1770s out on my next victim. It will be cold when I first put it on. Man, that's a lot. You have to, you have to put on a oh lot. Oh my gosh. Woo, that's cold. It's a cold cream. Woo. <laughs> it's like rubbing mayonnaise. <laughs> now, I, I is, got the mayonnaise on me. Now this is the time when I tell you that I actually switched it out with mayonnaise. Just to play mm. a joke on you. No, don't eat that. I'm choking. Make a whip. I'm just kidding. Okay, it's kind of hard because you have some facial fur. Okay, I am now cleansing Ron's face. This is the first time he's bathed in many nights. It's only been three. It's been three moon cycles since he's last bathed. <laughs> <laughs> moon cycles. <laughs> I'm a busy man. Oh, I'm no, is it really? Is it burning? No, it is. Okay, I'm. Got goop all over me now. <laughs> Open your eyes, Ron. <laughs> Do you feel beautiful yet? Mish Mish. No, I feel... Is he beautiful? I feel sticky and just... Like I got stuff on my face. You feel like flies would just... Yeah, they would stick, stick to me. Okay, so now I'm going to take a dry Is rag. Okay? Maybe. I'm going to take a dry rag and just rub it off of your face. Oh my gosh. The one part where I rubbed you looked 20 years younger. Nah, -uh, really? It's true. Okay, keep rubbing. There's oh, my. I, it wiped the wrinkles off on the cloth. Do you see it? There's a wrinkle right there. It just fills in the cracks, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, it's like I'm dating a whole new man. That rad's got a smell to it. I'm <laughs> sorry. I think Mishmish slept on it or something. It's cleanish. <laughs> Okay, it's almost completely gone now. Okay, just working it around that beard. Ta da! There you go, Ron. Okay, how does he look, guys? <laughs> does he look younger? Wow, 
your face is so smooth, so hydrated. <laughs> this is very nice. Okay, so you're... Okay, it does feel slicker and smoother. You... But I feel like it has sealed in all the juices that were coming out already because it's, it's hot in here. It sealed in the juices, so oh my. Well, my face feels nice and clean now. Does it really? So I think we're going to call it a night. So I hope you all enjoyed this, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Have a good week, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care, and brace yourself for some more spooky next week. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>